Hello and welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today we want to talk about QNAP and QNAP specific support for Kubernetes in Container Station. So QNAP released Container Station 2.5 on March the 10th and they released Container Station 2.5.1 on March the 21st. This new version supports lightweight Kubernetes, which is known as K3S, as a single node only cluster. The other addition is support for Kata containers, which increase the security of containers by implementing stronger workload isolation using hardware virtualization as a second layer of defense. The Docker engine has also been updated to version 20.10.11 in this version for improved security. So what should we know? Well, when Container Station 3.0 is released, presumably later this year, all support for LexC containers will be completely discontinued at that time. So prior to that, you want to watch my video that I made entitled QNAP LexC to LexD Container Migration Tool, where I talk about how to convert LexC containers in Container Station to LexD containers to be prepared for this upgrade. Container Station 2.5.1 also fixes a problem whereby it would fail to start a container using bridge mode on an interface that uses port trunking. Container Station 2.5.1 is only compatible with QTS 4.5.4 and newer, so that means it works with all QTS 5 versions, and also Qt's Cloud version 4.5.7 and newer. So what exactly is K3S? Well, K3S is a highly available certified Kubernetes distribution designed for production workloads in unattended resource-constrained applications. K3S is a single 50 megabyte binary that reduces the dependencies and steps that are required to install, run, and update a Kubernetes cluster. I believe that for this release of Container Station version 2.5.1, that QNAP has created a single node master cluster, basically running the K3S server and an integrated worker node inside running the uh, K3S agent command inside of it. So this is a single node only cluster. In this release, this creates a single node K3S Kubernetes cluster, as I just explained, and it can implement workload balancing. So what exactly are Kata containers? Well, Kata containers are a secure runtime container that use lightweight virtual machines and feel and perform like containers. Kata containers provide stronger workload isolation by using hardware virtualization technology as a second layer of defense. And Kata containers were launched in December of 2017 and merged with parts of Clear containers and also with Hyper.sh Run V and are scaled to support AMD64 ARM processors like the Raspberry Pi and X60, X8664. So Kata supports and uses QEMU as its base, but a very lean part of QEMU. So Kata is open source and is hosted on GitHub under the Apache 2 license. So why Kata? Well, my best guess is that I've seen instances where poor performance of containers can impact global resources on a QNAP NAS. The isolation in Kata should help to resolve this issue. There are also issues I have seen where container access to C groups conflict with the host OS on the QNAP and Kata containers will virtualize this OS layer and hopefully eliminate those types of conflicts. 
Sometimes container nesting doesn't work. So in terms of a comparison, QNAP came out with this slide on their website and they talk about the fact that their LexD containers support OS level virtualization like I have discussed in my previous videos. Recall that virtual machines have to virtualize the entire operating system and the hardware. LexD only has to virtualize the operating system. Docker is a single image that only virtualizes the application. And Kata are basically Docker containers that are nested inside this hypervisor virtualization technology. So Kata will virtualize Docker containers and operate them in a cluster so that they can be load balanced. So what do Kata containers look like versus traditional um, Docker containers? Well, a Kata container, and this is a slide from the Kata website, uh, you've got a virtual machine and you've got a particular application process running and you've got volatile data and non-volatile data in namespaces and you have a Linux kernel that is actually part of that virtualization of the container. And then under it, you have hardware virtualization that you get from this small part of QEMU, and then that sits on top of the Linux kernel of the host. Whereas in traditional containers, you have your process that's running, and it has its namespaces, but it sits directly on top of the kernel for the host, and then utilizes the host kernel resources for CPU, memory, network, and storage. So basically, Kata containers provide one additional level of virtualization to improve performance and security. So what are the features of Kata? Well, from a security perspective, they run in a dedicated kernel providing isolation of network, I.O., and memory and can utilize hardware-enforced isolation with virtualization. And then for compatibility, well, they support the industry's standard um, open container uh, format and Kubernetes interface as well as legacy virtualization technologies. So Kata can be used inside of Kubernetes or it, it can be used to in conjunction with Kubernetes, which I believe is what QNAP has done. And in terms of performance, it's supposed to deliver consistent performance as, as standard Linux containers or as Docker containers might with increased isolation without having to suffer a performance hit. And then finally, they eliminate the requirement for nesting containers inside of full-blown virtual machines because standard interfaces make these, these Kata containers easy to stand up and, and run. So here we are signed on to the QTS desktop on my lab NAS. And I'm going to start Container Station. And you can see that Container Station comes up with the Lexi end of support notification saying that once you pass version 3.0 of Container Station, that you're no longer going to be able to use Lexi containers. So we acknowledge that. Go watch my video to learn how to convert your LexD containers to LexD. All right, so now just in review, if we go to create a container and I want to create a LexD container, I can type Ubuntu. I can go to the LexD image server. I can pick a Focal Fossa container. I can say install. I can say uh, test-LexD. No spaces are allowed in the name of your container. I can say use up to 10% of my CPU and give this container 2 gigs of memory, otherwise known as 2048 megabytes. Go to advanced settings, uh, refresh the MAC address so that it gets the same MAC address every time container station starts. I'm going to make a bridged interface and it's going to be bridged down to my LabNet network, which is my test network. And I go over to device. And as I talked about in previous videos, you've got to put this check mark for run containers in privilege mode or else your LexD containers will not start on QNAP without running in privilege mode. 
And that may change later, hopefully it will, but for right now, that's how they work. So then there's a summary of what I wanna do, and I go ahead and click OK. I go back to Overview. I can click the progress. It says it's creating the container. It's completed and it's started. So there's the LexD container. And in my other videos, I go into how to configure LexD containers. But this video is not really particularly about that. It's really about, um, about Docker applications. So let's just do draw.io as a really simple Docker application. And we'll say install this thing. And we'll just call it draw.io and we'll give it again like 10% of the CPU and give it like two gigabytes of memory. Go to advanced settings. We have a lot of environment variables we can set optionally. We go ahead and refresh the MAC address. I'm going to go ahead and set the mode to bridged again. Use DHCP is fine. Go ahead and create the container. Now this time we did not need to set this container in privileged mode. And it should work because Docker containers seem to work unprivileged, but LexDs seem to require the privileged mode. And now my container is uh, created and started. And so you can see I have a test IO container that's a LexD and I have a Docker container. So if we go to preferences, under preferences, we now have a Kubernetes setting. If we go under Kubernetes, it says container station allows a standalone lightweight K3S cluster and the official Kubernetes web UI dashboard. The K3S server is a non-configurable single node cluster that runs locally within the Docker inter instance. Uh, enabling Kubernetes allows you to deploy workloads in parallel on Kubernetes and standalone containers. So I'll say, okay, go ahead and enable K3S and of course, um, deploy the dashboard also and click apply. So right now it's in the process of starting Kubernetes. Now that we have a dashboard URL for the Kubernetes web UI, you can click on it. It goes ahead and brings you to this page. If you go back to your container station, you're going to want to say, uh, Click on the bearer token, copy the bearer token, and close. Go back to the dashboard, paste the bearer token in, and do a sign on. And now you have the login for the Kubernetes management web UI. And you can take a dashboard tour. So basically, what this whole Kubernetes thing is, is it's the idea of building a clustered management system for Docker containers that can do load, uh, load management and load balancing. So for example, you could have, instead of having one web server deployed in a Docker container, you could have five Docker containers that actually point to the same web server and it could load balance between those five containers. Anyway, this video is not really meant to go over all the details of how Kubernetes is used, but I wanted to indicate that, yes, uh, Container Station version 2.5.1 now supports Kubernetes, and this is how you get into it. So in summary, the load balancing and failover features of K3S provide greater availability. Kata uses the resources of QEMU hardware virtualization to increase security and isolation. This means that Docker applications would be deployed inside of K3S for lightweight deployment and management. And K3S would use Kata for additional security. So everything I read says that this is fast, lean, and efficient. It's the future, but to me, it feels like a little bit overkill to have virtualization inside of virtualization. I think time will tell but I really do believe that it's designed to improve the stability of the hosted applications. And it's likely that Container Station 3.0 will expand on the use of 
the K3S cluster that we're seeing right now in Kata, and we'll see what happens when that occurs later this year. Anyway, that's it, and thanks for listening today, and please subscribe and like to the channel, and we'll see you next time.